I am Sia Sastre and I am on the organizing committee of TEDx International uh, at Elpro International School. And I'm here with Arashi Rohila, who is a speaker. So Arashi, how was your experience speaking at TEDx in Elpro International School? I'd say it was quite overwhelming, but at the same time, I was excited the entire time I was here. And I think it was just a great opportunity for me to talk about something that I'm actually very passionate about since I have worked in this field multiple times, even though I'm just 16. But like, um, yeah, so it was just a great opportunity and a wonderful session we had with all of the speakers. It was just amazing. Your speech was truly very inspiring and very unique, something we haven't heard so far. You spoke about how if uh, you could, you could uh, access a time machine, you would go back in time. If you could, what is one character or a person who you would meet for an hour if given the chance? I think everyone who knows me knows the answer to that. I'd definitely meet Audrey Hepburn, which I'm pretty sure everyone saw coming. Um, now the reason behind this is because a lot of people think that she's simply just a fashion icon and she's the character that all of the cool women in TV shows admire. But what a lot of people don't know is the fact that she's actually also a UNICEF Goodwill Ambassador. So as she was a completely different character on TV, for example, Breakfast at Tiffany's, she was completely, she's the last person you'd expect to be an activist. Her approach towards activism was just inspiring. She helped children. And even though that isn't something that's similar to Gen Z activism, it's the way she portrayed herself and I feel like that's something that a lot of people need to learn how to do. And because, you know, we've started romanticizing a lot of things that shouldn't be something that we look forward to. But her being the kind, humble person she is, valued simplicity and elegance. And so, obviously, Audrey Hepburn. Yeah, I get that. Um... Uh, you spoke about how intolerance and prejudice comes in the middle of um, activism today, how uh, people can't really accept the fact that other people can have opinions of their own. Yeah. What, what do you think is a good way to implement genuine and sincere activism in our day-to-day -day lives? The first step in doing so is acknowledgement. Acknowledge the fact that someone in front of you has not been familiar with these things. If you ask someone to instantly change their entire view in a snap, they'll think it's absurd. If I start telling you that Z is the first letter in the alphabets, you'd be weirded out and you'd think I'm crazy. So that's the kind of reaction someone else has and particularly people older. So if we're trying to explain to our parents, that's the kind of reaction because it's something completely new to them. So I think the first step in actually achieving some sort of tolerance is this mutual understanding that we're agreeing to disagree. We have different ideologies. And instead of focusing on one, we can even do a little compromise, best of both worlds. So things like that. Yeah. Um, last question. Uh, what... Yeah. What ideologies of yourself have you implemented in your life? You spoke about activism. How would you say you are a budding activist yourself? Okay. I'd start off with, there's a lot of topics that I could cover, but I feel like it's too long to cover. But I'll talk about women empowerment as of now mm -hmm. and how there's a lot of people who don't accept it. And I think that instead of jumping to conclusions, we need to actually understand why these people don't accept it in the first place. The same goes with LGBTQ rights. The same goes with racism. Now, by any means, I am not implying that these people don't deserve to have equality. Equality is something that we all are entitled to. It's basically a right. It is a right. And so the first and by far, like I said, is to Comprehend what's going on. If you ask everyone, can you tell me more about um, women empowerment? If you ask them, can you tell me more about toxic masculinity or LGBTQ rights? Not everyone's going to have a detailed response because people don't know. And I highlighted this in my speech as well. 
Activists are activists because their friends are activists. Because of herd mentality. It's like what everyone does, we want to do. And that's the concept of unpopular opinions. If we put everyone in some sort of lie detector machine and ask them, are you actually happy with Gen Z? A lot of people are going to say no. And so that's the unpopular opinion that I have. And that's the small idea that I bring forward. Let these unpopular opinions out. Yeah. Thank you. That was truly enlightening.